In previous sections, you saw that it is very hard and painful to configure all those uh, static routes in your routers, especially if you have more than two or three routers. So maintenance is another issue in uh, having static routes. So what is the solution for this? I can go and use dynamic routing protocols, such as uh, routing information protocol that is called RIP, or open shortest path first protocol that is called OSPF in brief. So first of all, I want to talk about RIP. And what is RIP? RIP is the simplest protocol to use in your network. It has some flaws, it has some drawbacks, but it is very easy to configure in, network, uh, in, in your network. So what is the drawbacks of RIP? You cannot have more than 15 hops away if you want to use RIP. Another issue is it doesn't include bandwidth into its metric calculation. Actually, if you have networks with different connection types, such as frame relay here, 10 gigabit per second here, and 100 megabit per second here, RIP is not a good choice for your network. You are not going to use RIP in such a network. You are going to use OSPF. OSPF is a better choice. But if all my networks are of the same type, for example, 100 megabit per second, RIP is a very nice protocol to configure. And how can I configure RIP in my network? I'm not going to talk about theories here. I just want to show you the very simple procedure to configure RIP in your network. I need to go to my routers. And first of all, you can see that I have removed my static routes. I need to go to routing and go to RIP and I only need to configure one piece of information that's networks. So click on this plus sign and technically I'm telling this router that any IP address that falls into this range that I'm just typing here should go under RIP process. So on router 1 if I check my Topology, I can see that I have 10, 10, 12, 0. I have 10, 10, 13, 0, and I have 1, 1, 1, 1. So let's go and configure this on router 1. I type 10, 10, 12, 0, slash 24. This is a range that consists of 10, 10, 12, 1, 2, 10, 10, 12, 254. So any interface under this range will participate in RIP process. So click on OK. Again, I click on this plus sign and add 10, 10, 13, 0, slash 24. And one more time, 1, 1, 1, 0, slash 24. Click on OK. Now you can see that I haven't configured any interface. I haven't configured any keychain or anything here. Here, I can go to ROS and see that these information are in my RIP database. Okay, let's go to router 2. On router 2, I want to configure the same thing in my uh, RIP configuration. You can see that I have removed my static routes here again. Let's go to routing and click on this RIP. And again, you can see that I haven't con configured any interface. Just go to network and click on this plus sign. 10, 10, 12, 0, slash 24. Click on OK. It's going to be 2, 2, 2, 0, slash 24. And of course, I have a 192, 168, 24 network here. So click on this plus sign. 192, 168, 24, 0, slash 24. Click on OK. That's it. Now, if I go to Routes, I can see that. Uh, not only I have information about my own interfaces, but I can receive information from the other router. You can see that this is coming from router 1, and this is coming from router 1. And if I go to my IP routing table by going to IP routes, I can see that some of these routes that I have received from the other router have a mark of RIP here, a uh, small r here it shows me that this is rip as you can see it has a gateway assigned to that that is not on my uh, uh, on my router router 2 
And you can see that there is a distance assigned to this. I'm going to talk about distance later. And you can see there is no preferred source for this information. Again, I'm going to talk about preferred source later. So what if I want to ping this? If I go to ping tool, I can ping 1111. You can see that this ping is successful. And of course, I can source the ping from my loopback interface. And this is successful. And why this is successful? Because Rather1 knows about my loopback interface. If I go to Rather1, I can see that loopback interface of Rather2, I know about it. So you can configure RIP very easily. Let's go to Rather3 and configure RIP on this. First of all, I need to remove these static routes. I need to go to routing and select RIP and go to networks and add the networks that I want to add to this uh, routing protocol 10, 10, 13, 0 slash 24. I have 3, 3, 3, 0 slash 24. I have 172, 16, 35, 0 slash 24. And that's it. Now if I go to RIP, routes, I can receive routes from router 1 and I have information about a router that is not connected to me. You can see that I have information about router 2 as well. Now I want to show you something. If I want to reach to router 2's uh, loopback 0 that is here, I need to go to router 1, from there to router 2, and from router 2 to its loopback 0. That means it is 3 hops away from me. Now if I check here, I can see that the metric is 3. That means it is 3 hops away from me. And you can see that the metric is very, very simple here. It doesn't have any specific calculation like what OSPF has. So, uh, what is the biggest metric? The biggest metric available is 16. If you have 16, that means it is not reachable. Anything less than 16 is reachable. Anything equal to or greater than 16 is unreachable in RIP. Let's go to router 4 and configure RIP here as well. First of all, I need to remove this static route. Go to routing RIP. Select networks and click add 192.168.24.0 slash 24 4440 slash 24. And that's enough. I don't want to configure the rest of my network. I just want to show you how to configure RIP. So let's go to routes and you can see that I have information about every router that has RIP configured on that. And again, I can see that to reach to 3333, that is the loopback interface of router 3, I need to go 4 hops, and it is 4 hops away from me. Okay. Now, in next section, I want to talk about other specifics of RIP, such as interface, and why we need to go and configure interfaces in RIP.